Uh, so the last we saw them at the end of the season, they were flying away in a vectored thrust vehicle, uh, having surrendered to uh, the alliance of their nemeses. Uh, this was, I think, two episodes after I, I'm pretty sure Sharon or someone as a player said something like, we're sure collecting a lot of enemies. Um, it was, yeah, I think it was, it was, it was, uh, uh, it was Navad talking to Lita. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lita didn't was, understand how you could possibly have so many enemies. Yeah, it was, it was Lita's <laughs> observation. And I kind of looked at my notes and went, Ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> so that was a cliffhanger and the uh, cliffhanger was resolved well, yesterday night when a group of basically guest stars from earlier episodes came together to go rescue it. So it was uh, Tiber Fen and Captain Tana and uh, Nomi, the Desolation Guide, and um, not Gabe, he, Gabe's the player. Gecko James. Gecko James. Gecko James, thank you. Uh, the four of them were about as unlikely and un uncooperative a team as one could want, uh, but they managed to pull it up and got you out of there. Uh, so you have come to this place and you have been, you were cryo frozen, all of you, for more than a week. Before that, you had been captured in the vampire's lair and you had basically been in cages for another week. Um, things you will know. Apparently, you had encountered them during a previous session. They have several life stages. They have simple ones that are almost like ghouls that just feed. And there's more evolved version that kind of opens up and does, I forget, it's a vampire movie from 1980 to 1997 where their faces kind of split open. So kind of like that. Uh, and then the really powerful ones uh, can steal faces. So they can take someone's identity, take on their faces. And it was looking for a while they had planned to do that with you. But as it turned out, uh, Curse had other plans. He, uh, <laughs> they were featuring you at their casino. They, have a, they had a casino in Temple, Texas. And they referred to you as the exhibit. And uh, employees and special guests got to come up and see you in your cryo pots and take the tour. It was extra volts to come see you. Um, and that's where you were. So you learned those things. Um, coming out of cryostasis, you get cryo sickness. So those of you with higher endurance will weather it better. Like Torg had like a little bit of a hangover for a day or two. And then was like, Torg, feel better. <laughs> you know, everyone else, however, got the second Moderno shot. It was like, oh my God, I can't go to work today. Impossible. Uh, so if your character is someone who would have reacted more poorly or has a weaker endurance, they're probably still sick. Uh, your thoughts are also a little muddled. You're having a little trouble remembering around the period where you were frozen because when you're in stasis, it freezes everything, including your neurons, and you stop. Uh, brief aside, we'll get on with the game. Um, you saw what happens if the neurons don't freeze. Uh, you encountered uh, cryo ghosts. Uh, one, in fact, that has given uh, Navad a, a phobia about chocolate. Oh, yes. So if you're frozen and you're not in full stasis, your brain instead of stopping, becomes like super active and can telepathically connect with others, which is why you get frozen. Um, so you have been awake now for three days and you've been in the bar trying to figure out what the hell you're gonna do next. So my first question is going to be, and I'm gonna go person by person, how do you think, what are you doing? Like, are you helping out? Are you just meditating? Are you pacing angrily? Are you making dummies of curse and taking a whiz on the dummy? Like Eric, how are you coping with your post-capture, post-cryo-freeze existence? Well, considering that just before the cryo-freeze, uh, Eric underwent some of the worst experiences that he can remember. He's probably still sort of mopey about it and uh, 
not in a sort of demonstrative Morrissey kind of way, but more in a kind of like um, cleaning Karen over and over again kind of way. So more, more almost emo fixated. Yeah, I, I'm more like um, like Captain Jazz screamo, if you will. So if you're helping out at all, you're probably doing taking guard on the roof, that kind of shit. Yeah, but sort of um, with the knowledge that I could snap it on if I want to, but not really snapping it on. Okay. D, uh, how are you? What are you up to? Are you helping out? Uh, basically, you're, the staff has put you up here. So some of you may want to help out, but obviously others will not be up to it. Clearly, Eric is not. Um, D is pretty susceptible to sicknesses. So like uh, the rat poisoning and all these other things. So I have a feeling that she would not be doing very well. Um, just really tired. Um, yeah. If anything, she'd be like trying to help probably like as a greeter, you know, just saying hi and welcoming people, helping out here and there, but not a lot. Um, a little bit lower energy than normal. So like a lot of sleeping, a lot of fluids, mm. probably as the sweats. So yeah. you've got, you, you have the Moderna for sure. Uh, okay, Goldwater, how, wh where are you coming from? Uh, as far as like physical health goes, I think this would tie into um, the uh, sunlight issue for my character. I have a, a problem with direct sunlight and I can like burn and then blister. And I feel like it's almost like a reverse problem um, where I came out of it with like well, I don't want to say freezer burn. That sounds like a joke, but like basically like caustic burns um, from the, the cold uh, and yeah. the thawing is making it heal, but it hurts a lot. But again, uh, I'm not a very, uh, I'm very stoic. Um, so I'm kind of powering through it. The thing I'm trying to figure out is how do I get my stuff back right i need my stuff um, we'll have an we'll have an interaction about that in a minute i can also assume maybe you've got some it sounds like you've got some healing you probably have some gauze yeah over some of the wounds right because your skin probably is blistered and broken in places yeah and i would like cream and stuff i have to keep putting on like lotion and trying to get these yeah the, and the, the, staying don't break out and get infected i'm going outside during the day at all no no way while you're while you're wounded, just not even trying. Yep. Okay. Uh, Navad. So remember when I said that everyone at some point had uh, cushions duct taped to them and you were thrown in the garbage? Mm -hmm. Not Navad. Uh, Nomi was the one doing the duct taping, and she didn't tape any cushions to you. Yeah. No, I was. I <laughs> Shannon, the the uh, actor, was watching that last night. So <laughs> you. <laughs> You have a lot of bruises, uh -huh. possibly even like a couple of sprains or a light right. break, right? Right. Because you you pink you you pachinkoed down they, they the kind of yeah thumped me down the thing yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think is the Yelp review that Nomi gave of your encounter with her. Oh okay. oh well okay. <laughs> I, I don't enough. know I don't know man, but if I was on an like, OK Cupid date. And their response was to throw me in the garbage with no cushion. I'm okay. not going to take that as a, like a five stop. Fair, fair enough. Am I cognizant of the? Well, I'm not. I'm not no. aware of who no, threw it. No, would have no. All you would know is that you're really bruised, and you might have had conversations like, "Huh, I wonder why I." I'm so cushion. bruised, and nobody. <laughs> yep, like maybe they ran out of cushions. Yeah. Um. Well, so Navon is like, uh, yeah, so dealing with that, I guess. Um, also, like, the last thing that happened before uh, uh, we got high kidnapped, hijacked, was um, it was revealed to me that my extra kind of OP powers were not my own. Uh, and so I'm kind of like trying to figure out if I can get that juice back uh, without uh, having a, somebody else occupying me um at the same time um so it's sort of like study a lot of like sort of um 
secretive trial and error of like trying to like blow shit up, you know. So I'll go back to you once I've touched everyone on everyone at least once. Okay. I gotta watch my phrasing. Once I've touched everyone, I'll go back yeah, to yeah. you. I was just gonna say, <laughs> once I've touched everyone at least phrasing. Once. <laughs> new I mean, choice new way to do that <laughs> I, i'm a teacher you gotta be really fucking careful uh torg so being thrown down a garbage chute was not it's the least <laughs> of everyone it was the least problem for torg it was like I, a roller coaster for torg yeah, I think <laughs> if, like, if it's a real Fitcher, ride yeah the david Fitcher camera would follow torg and it would almost be like i think torg would still be asleep <laughs> So, are you, you imagine Torg's in pretty good shape? Like, what is Torg up to? Do you think? Yeah, uh, I definitely feel like Torg is probably like you, like you said. Really, all Torg had was uh, like a pretty bad headache, hangover for like a day, and so now is pretty much fine physically. There's really nothing wrong with them. Um, the one thing I do want to ask, though, the most important thing is uh, not the status of Torg, but the status of Baby Rip. Because Torg would need to know that, so I need to know what that is. No sign. And that... Shut your mouth. Oh, that's awful. I hate that. No. Boo. Okay, in that case, so Torg, Torg is, is a like... wreck. Torg's in a Torg's... mood. Torg is beyond in a mood. Torg is desperately, desperately sad and and... Baby Rip was their child. That was their child. So your so, guess is, and talking to other people here, Rip probably went back home, which would be the Shire. So the problem is, you would have to think if you're going to risk showing up there to get Rip back. Right. right? Yeah. So There's, so Torg is definitely, I guarantee you, Torg is trying to figure out a way to get Rip, Baby Rip back to them like a hundred percent like pretty much anyone that comes to the bar if they're familiar with the shire or they've been to the shire or they can come and go from the shire <laughs> torg has been like torg want to know have you seen rip do you see small cute terrifying thing and you know basically trying every single person that torg comes in contact with to get them to like come come bring their child back to them so i think part of hammer's job as your friend is to come over to you when that starts and like, Torg, you know I love you, but you, you got to just let them have their drink. You got, I'm doing what I can, but they've only got a few volts to spend on Pruno. I, I know you're desperate, but you need to leave them alone. Look, he's peed his pants, dude. I don't think you understand how terrifying you are. Tor Torg will be much nicer about in future. Torg promise. Torg, Torg. Torg cannot stop asking because Torg, you know, Torg. Can I ask for Torg you? Torg being baby. Can I ask for you? I'm a little less Torgy than you are. Torg thinks, Torg think that might be insult on Torg. But. You make but, a living making people give up their weapons by giving him the Torg left. Fair, Torg say fair, Torg say that very, very fair comment. And look okay, maybe, to. maybe Torg, maybe Torg been acting very, very emotional. Maybe <laughs> Torg not, not think, thinking with correct Torg brain. So Torg think your, Torg think, yes, as long as you promise, as long as you promise Torg that you ask everyone, everyone. All right, I, I understand. I... You no need to press. Torg will be cool about that. They say no, Torg believe. Sure. I mean, Whiskers but... isn't gonna like it, but I, I understand it's a mom thing. Torg also extra muscle here. Torg here to obvious back up and help whenever problem happen at bar. So really. Torg not getting payment for that. So really, it's a the even, even, give, give, take, take thing. Right, but if we don't have customers, there won't be brawls for us to stop. Torg not say you turn them away. Torg. Here, here have, Torg, have, just, just ask you up. Have, have some of this. I made it with orange juice and bits of things you don't want me to tell you. 
You get stripped. Torg suspicious, it. but Torg say okay. It's the best I can do. We're not paying. <laughs> <gasps> Torg have idea. What if Torg put up posters of Baby Rip that say, see Torg if you know Baby Rip at Shire. And then, and then you know but, have to question people. I just posters point. all over the bar? That's going to go over real well with the cat. What if it's just one, one, one monster poster at front of bar in window, just one, and then you know even ask them, you just point at it. And then if they go, Mar, then you leave them be. But if they look question, you bring to Torg. Can you draw the creature? I can. Oh, that made Torg so happy. Torg good at many things. Art is uh, not one of them. Whisker is going to be so glad he clocked in today. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, maybe draw the, the creature and I'll, I'll see about posting it. Okay. Uh, Navad. So the thing that you and Gordon for a while thought was an extension of yourself, you learned was actually that you had been seated by the satyr. Yes. And he's been growing in the darker parts of you. Yes. And he had emerged. So he's not there anymore. Like right. during the final battle, he he came out. Guess what? I'm bringing Act Five. And he, yes. he, he was out of it. So there is now this. It's kind of like he built a layer in the dark places in your soul and isn't in there anymore. Right. So you do feel the absence of that. Okay. Right. Do you connect with that in any way? Uh, yeah, I want to kind of go walk around in this uh, vault. I keep I keep going back to Naruto, man. It's like I got that nine-tailed fox vault inside of me, but it's it's empty. So give me a six die roll, please. Six die roll. Okay. Our first clickety clack of the evening. Clickety clack with with real physical custom nuked dice for if all I the If I get the uh, cost down, I'll make those available to. Uh players and fans of the game because they're okay fun. so question uh is the rad symbol we, we've got the symbols the rad, the rad is the six the bomb is the one okay the bomb with it nuked is one then i got three sixes oh wow yeah i nailed uh, it baby so you turn your inner eye in on itself okay and you end up finding that echo of yourself that you presumed was there okay. is there if you go looking for it. Okay. But you're very aware that if you want that back, it won't be the Seder, but you'll be intentionally teasing it out of yourself and making yourself a darker caster. Ah, okay. So is that something you're spending your time doing? Are you, again, everyone's apparently, everyone's emo this episode. <laughs> So I think okay. Here's here's the. Not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to make Eric mad with this, but like this is the equivalent since it's we've already put it in like there's a vault. It's um, we've already put it in real estate metaphors. Sure. I am I am going on Zillow to look at houses, but I don't necessarily. Let's not do this, shall we? <laughs> okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, brother. But it's but it's it's more to be like what's out there not i'm not making an, a bid i'm sorry mike <laughs> austin for those not in austin our real estate market sucks so that's all i'm gonna say um but he's 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 kicking the tires on this place he's looking at the masonry but he's not he's not moving a cot down there so goldwater you can try to pay somebody to go to the shire and pick up your ship Like some of it will have been gone because it would have been taken when you were captured, but some of your stuff is in your room. Well, most of my files would be in the room. Yeah. Um, so are you looking for someone to throw some money at to have them do an errand? Yeah, I mean, that seems like my only choice right now. All right, so about, like I said, about three days into this, um, 
And the Ninth Life is not super busy. It's a place that people have clandestine meetings. Um, that's not how I pronounce that, but a lot of people mispronounce it. Um, so it's been pretty quiet. And uh, on the late afternoon of the third day, uh, you hear, I'm trying to figure out what this sounds like. You don't know what it is. Um, so for the players, it is a stealth helicopter. So they make a very peculiar like kind of noise, which is about a third as quiet as a helicopter that has the full blown uh, engine. I think they do it with like counter rotation and shit. Um, an area of engineering and science, I don't know particularly well, but science fiction, there's probably a, a Gimatron uh, wobble in there somewhere. So you all hear that sound and uh, at least some of you head out. And I'm gonna say that Eric is on the roof and sees this. Uh, there is a late model uh, military helicopter landing and it like, is painted. Impressively landing or like jankily landing? Um, whoever's piloting it is competent. So impressive. And the fact that it's fully operational and is effectively silenced is you've not seen one of these maybe ever. So you've probably maybe seen a drawing somewhere, like maybe at the military station, but there aren't a lot of these flying around. So you know what Eric's first instinct is going to be, right? Shoot it? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what I would do with that cinematically is I think we see it land through your scope. Right, because that's the shot I'd want if I was directing it. Is we can I see? Eric can I see Eric. who I'm looking at through the scope? Like, can I see the um, pilot? Yes. Did your character? I don't think you met Lita, did you? No. No. So there is a. I think the phrase "handsome woman," uh, sharp, sharply dressed. Uh, two people in very similar suits. Uh, there's. Her and then there's a guy that kind of looks like um, who who's the wrestler that's uh, playing the peacemaker, John Cena. So picture like John Cena in a suit that's two sizes too small. Easily done. <laughs> that's that's all he ever wears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and has like mirror shades, like uh, late '80s style mirror shades. Uh, and whatever the suit's made of is similar to the one. The young woman's wearing so they kind of look like they're from the same organization um and again they look unusually sharp and neither one <laughs> they don't got shit on them like there's there's not a lot of like obvious mutation or corruption or dirt or anything uh and it is landing and it's clear it's landing so that it's obvious it's doing it, right like they're not trying to sneak up on anything you know so if it's an attack they're being they've given up advantage because it looks like there is a gun on that thing. So if they were going to attack, they would have. Is effectively stupid. So how far away would they be? Um, about four Nissans. Okay. <laughs> so I suspect that like Nissan Rogues or Nissan Sentras? Sentras. The standard, okay. the standard is Sentra. The sedan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, Rogues is European. For whatever reason, Eric is more intrigued at this moment than he normally would be and decides not to scope out immediately. <laughs> so we see um, through the scope and then we, we see Karen go back up? No, I'm going to leave it trained on them. Okay. Um, and wait for them to get out and then yell at them <laughs> from far away. That's why I was trying to figure out whether or not they could hear me. The, um, the propeller... Uh, there's two of them and they do a thing where they go to the sides and back when it lands and get out of the way and there is uh, a door that opens on the side and comes down flat and becomes a walkway is it like they, a DeLorean? Uh, <laughs> almost but I, I know that there are a couple of APVs that have doors that work just like that but it's a little higher so DeLorean is not completely wrong uh, <laughs> The two people that were in the cockpit leave, so they're probably coming out. 
Okay. Hey. So- <laughs> can I can I see anyone other than Eric when I'm so, exiting? Going back to the car, the inside the, the plane. Um, in in the plane, in the helicopter, are Rita and Professor Pickles. Um, you have been sent by the committee uh, along with uh, the gentleman, the, the John Cena looking dude is named Timpano. And uh, he is actually an aide for General Purry. Uh, General Purry is the military leader of the committee. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, Timpano. Timpano, okay. Like a like a timpani drum. Like drum, yeah. Uh, no, his friends call him Big Knife. Big Knife. Big Knight. Big Knight. Big Knight. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm trusting Bar- uh, Barrett to, to get to the reference. Okay. Um, it's a very nerdy independent movie reference. Um, all right. So you don't get along with Timpano only in that he doesn't talk much at all. Ah. So you, in the time you played the character, which has not been a long time so far, but the impression I get is that you are efficient, but at least a little sociable, right? Yes. You're a social person. Mm-hmm. Timpano is an aide to the general. Okay. So you'll be like, Where'd you get the suit? It's almost as nice as mine or whatever. And he'll be like, that's true. It is. <laughs> She's like, you're really not giving me much to work off of here. Thank you, though. There's nothing. He's, there's no oxygen coming up to me. And you have not actually interacted with Curry because Curry is in an armored cat box. So generally it's carried around. There's a speaker on the side of the cat box. Uh, Curry is an older cat. And uh, doesn't come out of the box unless uh, Timpano thinks it's very safe. Okay. Okay. Lita's so, gonna. I'm assuming in those occasions she's turned to pickles and been like, "Do you feel like you need one of those?" Or no, no. Oh, no. Okay. No, 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 I'll, I'll no, try no, to get no. you one if if you really want. Oh, one, no, but, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. He's weird, even for us. Yeah. Seems, well, seems question, excessive. I'm going to say that D is probably still asleep and has not been woken up yet. Okay. Goldwater is actually in the bar. Okay. It's not come out yet, but it's beginning to hear that there's a commotion. It's probably going to be coming out. Uh, it's very clear. Eric is right there. Okay. Uh, and I would say Torg would have been working the door with Hammer. Uh, okay. So the first people you would see would be Torg and Eric. Shortly, very quickly followed by Nevad and Goldwater. Okay. So let's, just in case we have people who have not heard any of these people's descriptions, let's start with a description for Lita, please. So I think you've already described Lita beautifully as a handsome woman. She is uh, tall, well-built, um, but not excessively muscular, not excessively thin. Um, she has fiery red hair. She is, I'm assuming she hasn't changed since the last time we saw her. Except for the metallic uh, flex in the lips and around the eyes. Okay. Uh, the, that has not changed. Those are slightly new additions, but yes, slight metallic flex, the, but beyond more, more that. On that. More on that. <laughs> yeah, I figured there might be something <laughs> about her that might be different uh, that I you, might not know. Let me do a quick aside before you finish the description that mm-hmm. you do need to know this. Your reflexes seem to have sped up a little bit. Okay. Like your reaction time is quicker. I don't remember if the mad doctor promised you that. I think she did, but she apparently was not lying uh, because your your synaptic shit is right. It's uh, absolutely on point these days. Uh, on the other hand, your dreams are real weird. Oh boy. Okay. All the extra neuron firing is still happening when you're sleeping. Got it. So okay. you get real crazy peter max like high on like a bunch of coke kind of things nice um d- so just from from first glance aside from the the um additional kind of metallic shimmers she pretty much looks like a pregen still just yeah generally very well put together very well dressed doesn't look like someone who's seen a lot of 
dirt and grime, but that might belie her actual experiences. So that's later. Uh, two points for the use of belie. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Professor, Professor Pickles, I think uh, let's not bury the lead. Let's start with your cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's start with that. Uh, straight up, just a, a unassuming, <laughs> in most cases, unassuming, typical black cat. Uh, at first glance, you would probably just be like, well, that's an animal of some kind, and then wander away. But aside from that, uh, we already had a brief uh, you know, description, uh, mild telekinetic uh, abilities and a uh, short range telepathy, uh, just uh, used on the regular. <laughs> are you padding alongside Lita or are you on Lita's shoulder or something? Uh, I'm padding alongside Lita. Because yeah, you can also do the trick where you pick yourself up by your scruff, but that doesn't seem necessary here. We're we're very chill at the moment, so just kind of okay. just kind of uh, padding around at the moment. So Eric, what do you look like? So Eric is uh, I've done this description a hundred times. Eric is short, <laughs> but not like uh, uncommonly short. Not like dwarfish, but very short. Um, with uh, barrel chest and a lot of hair, um, long arms, very long arms, like primate long um also he's green that probably would be the first thing you'd notice about him because he is a goblin um that or the uh eye patch that covers his third eye which he has to keep over his third eye to to keep things in 3d and be able to aim his gun um and then he's always wearing some sort of resplendent uh, what he considers to be mod clothing, but the time frame has compressed. Right, right. So it could be anywhere from like 1955 to 2010 could be mod to him because he has no actual idea. Um, also, um, he carries all the time and is married to, legitimately married to, uh, his uh, gun, Karen. Um, and that's uh, that's him. So I'm going to make a, a deal with uh, the core cast uh, in answer to uh, uh, Mike's mention of I've done it a hundred times. Uh, you know, the Marvel comics from the 70s, late 70s, that would have, you know, a Tony Stark whose heart was wounded and developed a suit. Who, you can come up with a paragraph. I will commission art and you can read the paragraph and we'll throw up the art when you describe yourself and make it into a, a thing that will resolve quickly and consistently. Uh, all right, so also, uh, Tor, you are working the door. What does Torg look like? Yes, uh, Torg is a very, very tall and large, uh, about seven, little over seven feet tall. So very, very tall uh, and very, very triangular shaped in that, like the chest and the arms and all this very, very barrel, barely chested. But then uh, the waist of the hips and all of that is relatively small compared to the rest of them. Like not, <laughs> not small, but like comparative, you know, to the, the, the massiveness of, of the arms and the top, uh, smaller you know think this um wonderful shining green skin uh a naturally rainbowed braid uh that they did not have to dye themselves because thanks to the insane toxic atmosphere uh it has permanently dyed uh their braid rainbow colors like you know oil slicks you know when there's like an oil spill and you see all the 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 phosphorescent that that kind of effect is happening on on their head there it's super tiny ears for their very big head <laughs> um very cute little ears and uh that's pretty much those are you know oh wears a lot of you know old vintage leather uh, from the 80s that they find around um, and has trophies adorning their uh, uh, their jacket from their previous 
uh, kills. So Lita, you and Pickles exit the helicopter. Timpano and uh, the general in the cat carrier are next to you. Uh, Timpano says, uh, we're going to need a place to set, set her down. Yeah, we can we can do that. And is, I, at this point, can I see Eric pointing oh, yeah. a, a yeah. sniper? Hey, okay, that that's really not necessary. Um, let's have a conversation about that first before we decide what's necessary. Okay, is she will then in? You said you're a goblin. I would recognize just from on site. Okay, yeah, you I'm could gonna, not recognize in in Kudge. Then can I speak in Kudge and yeah, just say? Absolutely, I don't know that Eric speaks it. I do not. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so she'll start speaking in Kudge and say, "I'm I'm really don't think that having a weapon out right now is worth your time. We we parked in full view of everyone. We clearly mean no harm. Oh, I think I know him. <laughs> Pointing at Goldwater over uh, go- Eric's go- shoulder. Uh, Goldwater in the VOD. Come on. No, I see. Okay. So she's pointing and she goes, okay. So uh, he, he gets the, okay. The, there's a lot of like, <laughs> that happens, yeah. right? In case and, someone's listening, doesn't know what Kudge is. Kudge is an invented language that some of the people who are now identified as goblins, they've decided to create a culture who wasn't one. And they decided to lean into like fantasy. We're goblins now. So they made up a, like Esperanto, like we're going to speak goblins. They made up a goblin language, and Eric doesn't speak it, but, <laughs> but Lita does. No, but Eric, but Eric is amused that it, that you tried. It's like if you go to France and you ch- attempt to speak French, right, right. right? Then they're so much nicer to you than they would be if you don't. <laughs> so like he drops the gun and goes, "Okay, all right." <laughs> and she's gonna go, "Thank you," and kind of look at uh, Goldwater and uh, Navad and just particularly at Navad, just go, you look terrible. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> so brief physical description of Goldwater, please. Uh, Goldwater looks generally like a regular old human, white male human being, uh, but <laughs> actually has a couple mutations. Um, forked tongue and uh, sensitive to direct sunlight, but we've expanded that to some more detriments. Um, wearing a, uh, a a patched up but obviously beat up suit uh, with a um, it, it fell off, so that's appropriate. Um, Department <laughs> of Treasury special agent badge uh, or patch on it, um, and is right now it looks worse for wear. Has a fedora on his head and his hands wrapped up in gauze. Uh, just in case he would have to come outside. Um, outside of that, he just kind of looks like a mix between Tom Jane and the dude who played Agent Coulson. Um, so from some angles, very handsome, but from other ones, a little weird. Uh, oh, Clark Gregg. <laughs> Clark Gregg, thank you. I always forget his name. Um, and uh, as usual, does not have much of an expression on his face. Nabod? Uh, yeah, so uh, Lord Navad is a um, a very rare being in the wastelands. He is a wizard, and he kind of takes it a little too seriously. So he has like a little homemade, uh, like well, it's it's not homemade. It's like a, obviously like maybe from a costume shop or a ho- some <laughs> some sort of like a, you know cheapo thing that he came across. It's a wizard's cowl. Uh, that, you know, he's got, and it's like robes, but he wears a denim jacket over that. Um, he's about nine. what did we settle on? He's probably pushing 19 at this point. When we first met him, he was like roughly it's, 17. It's been a year and a half since episode one. Yeah, so he's like pushing 19. Although even he's not exactly how old, sure how old he is. Um, and uh, he's about six five, very gangly, awkward uh, looking guy with a little uh, kind of uh, emo uh, comb over, uh, black jet black hair, um, and uh, probably uh, uh, on the closest on close inspection, one of his most prominent features is that his skull, uh, that the his the pupils of his eyes have mutated to look like skulls. Um, and they're not like contact lenses. They're just the actual shape of his pupils. So is, is this, uh, is this the wizard? 
Yeah, yeah, this is him. Um, younger than I remember. I thought he was, it's, you know, it's only been a couple of days, I feel like, but I remembered him being older looking. Uh, um, so in, in uh, editor's note, it's been uh, over a month. Okay, a month. I was like, I couldn't remember how long we'd been gone. <laughs> Feels I'll, like a couple of days or a month or years, but it's been a while. I'll do my normal, slightly fast-paced walk uh, up to the crew here um, and turn to Professor Pickles first and say, Professor, Lita. Agent. Goldwater. I look at the other two. Uh, my, my name is uh, Timpano. Uh, this is General Purry, and the cat comes forward in the cat crate uh, and is an older female cat whose hair has gone completely gray. So Pathically says, I have come on behalf of the committee to make you an offer. Would, do you want to hear the offer, Agent Goldwater? Yes, please. please. Okay. Uh, Timpano says, uh, we'll need uh, your entire team. Uh, we prefer to present it to all of you together. Do you have a place we could do that? The bar should be sufficient. There's a back room that we can kick some people out of. Excellent. I'll turn and start walking back. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Lita's like, turns to pickles and is like, it's just as awkward as I remember. Okay. Yeah, they're not... Maybe this isn't the best idea, but hey, we're here now. Just and then, uh, Eric swings down, arms ahoy. <laughs> arms ahoy. With a, with, with a Karen strapped across his back and goes, hey, hi, Eric, and walks into the bar. In my mind, that's the name of your spinoff solo comic. Hey, hi, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Arms yeah. ahoy. Arms, 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 arms away. <laughs> yeah. oh. Not no, not nearly as delicious as trips ahoy, but, no. <laughs> but there are arms in every bite. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So everyone heads inside, uh, and at this point, D heads off in the back. You've heard the commotion. Lita and D catch sight of each other pretty much simultaneously. You seem to have the same infected by nanites disorder going on it's it's obvious that it's the same exact symptom okay oh so my it, gosh should i get a brief physical description of d please yes so um d is a another human looking being um she does have some uh slight uh what are they called whatever's um <laughs> modifications um Beats, so, bigotries regrets <laughs> no, <laughs> no 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 uh d is the wastelands version of kimmy schmidt um she yeah. is a precious being to be protected at all oh costs um i have uh what you call what, what was this called again the nano thingy bad improv phone <laughs> yeah, terrible improv phone. I have terrible no. improv phone. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the terrible improv phone affects my uh, lips, eyes, all the like little bits of uh, skin. So um, let's, I'm let's silver. call it chromata. Yeah, chromata. I got chromata. Got yeah. So um, she'd be looking spiffy and shiny, and um, I also have uh, I wear like a jumpsuit, like a. a Man, I'm losing all my words today. <laughs> I just, uh, I wear a little jumpsuit. I always have a little bandana on. The jumpsuit is covered in drawings um, of things that D has looked up or seen uh, along the way that um, are inspiring or pretty to her. So it sort of looks like a seven year old got a hold of her jumpsuit and drew like cutie <laughs> things all over it. Um, and it's really sweet. Uh, she also has a huge crush on Navad. They're dating. So she keeps a diary and there are pages and pages dedicated to like things she wishes that she could get Navad that don't exist anymore. Oh or, my God. Um, things that she, uh, like dates that she imagines for Navad and her to go on. Um, so, so since that, this should be stuff we can see, 
can we assume you're coming out of your room with that? Is and I assume it's like a Lisa Frank diary. Kind of thing. Oh my god! Well, it looks. It, I mean, it, you know, it's it looks as ratted as the rest of the universe. So it looks pretty banged up, but she is drawn again, the very like Lisa Frank uh, equivalent of the post-apocalyptic stuff on the, on the front. So speaking of drawings, D also comes up uh, with the, um, the homework of the uh, sign that she was supposed to create. Oh my gosh. So uh, <gasps> just in case, uh yeah this oh, okay. is, uh have you seen baby rip if okay. found bring to austin tour based fan contest if anyone posts this shit around austin and i see it i will give you something cool yay <laughs> i see well, i'm gonna post a pdf of this uh to our blog so if oh you my print gosh. It, post that shit don't break any laws but if you post it someplace legal and i see it i, I will get you a prezi Yay. So the minute you see it, you text me. <laughs> That's you right. Know where it is. Just, just put Have Jen's phone number it. on it. <laughs> the little rip tabs. Have you seen this baby? Oh my, oh my oh, yeah. god. Do not I approach with like socials of Yeah, we gotta put this socially. Do not approach very dangerous. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love so it. That's so cute. So Danielle, it was amazing. Ooh, ooh, Incredible. So amazing. Uh, and I mean, box. on that note, Torg themselves, of course, starts crying uh, <laughs> and 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 grabs D and and says, D Torg fave, Torg love, D help Torg. Torg say thank you. I always and then, and then Torg anime crying with the two. Just gushing <laughs> tears. Yes. <laughs> I'll work on that next. Um, while Torg is <laughs> squeezing the life out of me, I am desperately like, just like, <laughs> you know, I love you too. Please put me down. I am so tired and so oh. small. <laughs> Torg, Torg, so sorry. Torg, Torg, just get very emotional. Torg. <laughs> Torg. <laughs> and then Torg just starts like trying to gently... Just pat them and I'm just be like. Assume that Goldwater and Timpano fall to type and start basically readying an Ersatz conference room, kind of wordlessly, like pulling tables over. And yeah, he, he, he you look like you know the nod. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. And... Uh, apparently, it's the two of you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he is almost as strong as Torg, it seems like. Like he is lifting the furniture with with casual ease. Okay. He he is a big meaty boy, this guy. And he sets the uh, the cat carrier on the table. So the the entire group gets into the back room. Um, Hammer says to Torg, the big guy just uh, uh, tipped me with a gold coin. I'm going to clear the room. Uh, you, you, you have the bar for the evening. So if you need anything, just come get me, okay? Torg say this sounds great. If, 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 if big guy have gold, then, then maybe they help Torg too and, and Torg make, make new friends and new family. Thank, thank you, Hammer. Torg really appreciate Hammer. Torg, oh, Torg go cry again. <laughs> Uh, hey Mike, what was the what's the name of the stuff that was like the Jenkum? Uh, well, Jenkum is the main thing, but no, no, no. But in the bar, remember that the uh, the first wasteland tales, uh, the stuff that makes you blind when you drink it. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. yes. I don't remember off of. Uh, That's the stuff that Tor can just like that. I was just like shooting yeah, back, right? It. It's it's down in gourds. <laughs> Carefully. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can get some of that up, and Dixon. Uh, and Dixon, who runs the place, is a young man wearing a black bodysuit. And I, uh, I, I picture him as looking like he's going to be rehearsing for Fosse, like at any moment. Yes. And he's got like little cat ears and is uh, a lovely fellow who looks like, and when you get to know him, is always just getting out of a bad relationship, like forever and ever and ever. And he has also been tipped a gold coin 
and is going to make sure you have drinks and make sure you have whatever you need. And by gold coin, by the way, I don't mean D and D like you pounded stuff and poured coins. I mean like U.S. Mint, like collector, like paranoid. The economy is going to collapse. People bought these, so it's literally like a coin. Still worth quite a bit in terms of votes. So all of these wonderful people are gathered at the table along with uh, uh, Big Grumpy Tom Cena and General Purry. And uh, has, has General Purry been let out of the cat cage? At this point, Timpano is going to open the door and the cat will come out of the, the cat cage. And, and, every, and for those who, who didn't meet uh, Pickles last time, we've all kind of grokked that uh, the cats communicate telepathically with us they like a, like a sp- it comes across as a spoken voice right no it's telepathic and it's okay. completely telepathic so in your mind it'll be right. here uh and it's not necessarily something to everyone yet but the minute oh, okay. whispers who has to telepathically do the equivalent of human projecting your voice mm-hmm. so you know from experience pickles like you're bad at conducting meetings like this because you're not as powerful a telepath as the general is. So you tend to talk to one, two, or three people at a time. Gotcha. The older, more experienced general can actually kind of telepathically yell and everyone can hear them. Uh, but you'll hear telepathically, which you haven't experienced it is a very strange thing. Yes. Uh, the cat says, and the telepathic voice sounds in my mind like um, General Leah. So I picture um, uh, Carrie at, at age, like what is it, 50 or 60, like that, mm-hmm. a little bit of the crackle in the voice, but definitely mm-hmm. authority. Like the telepathic voice, I think, from the cat sounds like that. Hello and, and welcome. Thank you for speaking with me. I. If you wish to answer, you can speak out loud. I'll understand. I'll respond this way. Uh, I can also use a synthesized voice from a system within the cat box. Uh, but I generally only use that when telepathy is a bad idea. Anybody else here in this cat talk? It's so cute. Torque so relieved. Torque really, really worried. Brain just crack. Yeah, me too. The general shoots a look to the professor at, at when someone says, oh, they're so cute. Like, here this goes. <laughs> like, um, I'm not trying to be patronizing. That's the only physical comment I'll ever make, I swear. Professor Pickles, uh, my confederate here and I, work for an organization called the committee. Uh, the committee is comprised of six influential ultra cats. Uh, I, I can see from your reactions that some of you have yet to encounter ultra cats. Uh, we are a species that was genetically engineered to um, surpass your mental faculties. Uh, and the best of us have formed this committee Our purpose is simple. We wish to find the most effective way uh, to bring society back. We've gone over the brink. uh, Society is broken. And now um, it's returning, but it's returning through free growth, like a moss or a fungus or uh, weeds. And we believe that... uh, a certain amount of shepherding and guidance can create a better society for for everyone. So we understand through Lita here that uh, you, your team, has been operating in this area for some time now and has been fighting um, several rather dire threats to the people of this area. Is that correct? (laughs) Yeah. That's correct. So the reason we're speaking with you is uh, 
we had sponsored something called the World Dump. So we've been there. Well, it. I don't know if you're aware of this, but before the fall, the World Dome was a museum. After the fall, it attracted um, techno fetishists uh, who wished to advance ultra tech in often reckless ways and uh, turns and looks pointedly at Lita. Uh, the camera would catch like a reflection in her shiny silver lips. Um, we made, the committee made the mistake. Instead of beginning an experience experiment with a newborn settlement or a, a uh, settlement with no built-in ethos. We lent our support to these scientists believing perhaps arrogantly that their uh, belief in science would make them understand our mission better. Unfortunately, and I think some of you are aware of this, their recklessness um, proved unethical and immoral. So the dome, we have broken with the dome. We consider them to have fallen. It is very likely that they're working with the angels now. Some sort of deal has taken place. And we have seen um, a rocket leave the dome, which we believe is loaded with the same kind of materials that the angels have been mining from us. So the committee is left with a purpose and no functioning experiment. We wish to start another settlement, begin to work on uh, another set of tests in reestablishing a functioning society in the, the current state of the world. Um, we come to you because we believe you are nearly ideally suited to protect such a newborn settlement. It's a role you seem to have almost unintentionally taken on yourselves uh, many times over the past year. This would be more formalized in that you would certainly be free to pursue your own interests, but the safety of the settlement would be your concern. In exchange, we would obviously be providing you with a place to become a new base of operations, which judging by the fact that you're living above a dive bar is probably something that you're in search of right now. Uh, we can also uh, lend considerable resources to establishing this settlement. You don't need to run it merely to protect it. Um, so in broad strokes, are you interested? In broad strokes, I am. Details might get a little difficult with me. As my friends know, I have a very specific mission. But having a safe base of operations has worked to my advantage before. <clears throat> Tor. Torg in. Torg always, always happy to protect. However, Torg, uh, let's see. It seems to Torg that you have considerable power and reach and Torg happy to relocate to, to new, new space. However, Torg insists that Torg be provided with someone that can help Torg retrieve. Torg really thought Torg could keep together. <laughs> I pat Torg's back. Torg, thank you, D. Torg need baby Rip back in Torg life. Torg have baby. Baby Rip still stuck at Shire. Torg need baby rip. Now if baby rip okay and, and, and baby rip no longer need Torg because baby rip strong and, and, and confident and independent, Torg okay. But Torg just need to know. Torg need to know. Torg need the, uh, Torg, the general Torg cannot do anything else without without Pickles, baby rip. Pickles, the general reaches out telepathically 
So this communication is just between the two of us. Does the large mutant have a child? Uh, unfortunately, the large mutant is uh, not one I'm particularly familiar with, but I'd venture on the guess that maybe, um, and if so, then we're probably best to actually keep this individual uh, appeased. They seem very upset. Uh, yeah, they seem to uh, definitely be in touch with their emotions, I believe is the, the, the common phrase. I mean, if there is a missing child, if there is, uh, is the mutant a troll? Oh. I mean, if there's a baby troll that's been lost, we can certainly fetch it. That, um, maybe we press for further information on right. the exact uh, whereabouts and looks of this particular child. So all of that, when they're directly connected telepathically like that, it would be faster than we spoke it. That would be very quick. So basically the two cats shoot a meaningful look at each other. And the general says, um, we do have significant resources, yes. And if you are uh, missing this grip, we will do what we can to find them. And we, we do have considerable reach and resources, but um, not to put too fine a point on it, we are um, cats. So there are things that we are not ideally suited to do. That's what I'm here Tor for. Torg understands. Torg Tor Tor also... Torg very grateful, but Torg should also be honest uh, about uh, baby Rip. Now, now Torg, <clears throat> Torg feel baby Rip is most adorable, cutest, sweetest thing. But, but Torg understand that most people have, uh, let's say prejudice against uh, uh, baby Rip because baby Rip, might be a baby ripper, just, you know, and by, by might be, is a, a baby ripper. The but, great, but Torg... the great cat pads up to you and says, um, do you mind if I read your surface thoughts? I, I want to see what this rip looks like. Oh, Torg, say yes, Torg, absolute, Torg, 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 just, what? So, Want you to know that that baby Rip was orphan and 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 Tork help help birth baby Rip and so so baby Rip very different than regular Rips. So, so the cat looks at Torg. The camera zooms in on Torg, then zooms in on the cat face, then in on Torg, then in on the cat face, and then Professor Pickles <laughs> hears, "Oh God." <laughs> Can you flash the uh, Ripper picture again, Colt? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, <laughs> picture that, but the image in Torg's mind would be a super deformed version of that. So it would be adorable. We'll probably have a bow, big eyes. like So it wouldn't look quite like that. But I think maybe it's like the, the, the pop, yeah, the pop <laughs> version, like the Funko Pop the version. Funko pop <laughs> ripper. He goes, he goes, oh, no. yeah, yeah, Daniel's no. absolutely right. But I think that's actually worse. <laughs> I <would> disagree. <laughs> um, the cat steps back. I, um, all right. Um, Timpano, I might have an errand for you. All right. Hey, um, while you're there, uh, in in the place, checking on the baby, um, there is one other thing maybe you could help us with. Have you ever um, eaten churros? Is that like a duck? No, it is <laughs> much it is much better than a duck. I don't, it is, it's like a pillow that tastes like sugar and the earth at the same time. And uh, there's a machine that makes it. And if you could see your way clear 
to retrieve in our churro machine. Well, that'll be just about 80% of home right there. So you have a lost adopted child and a snack machine. Mm -hmm. A churro machine. A churro machine. There are other snacks. I I will admit, I came prepared for requests for particle cannons. Um, Churro machine and baby monster we're not at the uh, top. Mm, mm, mm. Tor, tor, torg object to use of monster, baby, baby rip, not monster. Baby rip, torg light. I also have some official government files that I need, <laughs> and some electronics that were left at the Shire. The cat does the cat equivalent of rubbing, the, <laughs> which I can't quite it's imagine. Like what pause, it's it just pauses yeah, yeah. its face repeatedly. <laughs> the, just a just fine. A, oh my gosh! So it sounds like if we can take the equivalent of a moving truck to your old settlement and go collect your things. Yes, that sounds perfect. I think you nailed it. Oh, yes, and Torg, one more thing, Torg, Torg must say, uh, 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 Torg again emphasized that baby rip, in general, harmless. However, uh, 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 baby rip has, has loyalties to, to family and, and, and to Torg. Um, but since baby rip, uh, no speak, uh, English, Hold on, and then Torg takes uh, their their nails, which are very, 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 very sharp, right. and then reaches up and uh, cuts out a chunk of uh, their braid, and then hands it, and being like, "This way, baby uh, Rip will know that they are to go with you because you are you are uh, with Tano Torg. You are with you are with mom." A Ziploc bag from his jacket, and reaches forward. And open the bag. It'll preserve the uh, odor. Torg say yay, and then Torg just you know drops it in. Not to add too much to the grocery list of things we need, but <laughs> I'm in uh I'm in dire straits for some extra parts for my buddy Jeepers. Um, it would be really cool if, uh, if you found any AI parts or anything that I could use to hold them and bring them back. That'd be so cool. AI parts. Mm-hmm. The general looks over at, at Pickles, and again, they get the one-on-one communication. Is, is this a real thing, or is this an imaginary friend? I'm honestly likely to believe it's a real thing at this point with this group of individuals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised at how charismatic and charming they can be after you know a, a couple days with them i assure you this is the best solution we should definitely be doing this and take them quite seriously you're gonna need to have a talk with lita because she recommended them can you can you can you hold a moment before saying anything else i, I i'd like to uh interject with someone before we continue on with these negotiations. Absolutely. Pickles then turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh Shannon, I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> I, I knew you I knew you were coming my way. All right, let's go. Pickles turns to Navad and starts the, a one-on-one telepathic communication. I'm going to ask you very politely. Please yeah. do not ask for anything else. <laughs> I, I understand that uh, w- we're asking a lot of you, um, but the general is um, a little old and maybe misunderstands some things sometimes. So let's leave the requests at as they are for now. What with the uh, essentially moving homes and getting a truck and getting your things. Please don't ask for a couch. Just oh, keep uh, things simple. I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I don't have anything. I mean, the only thing that I have that's of value is this, and I hold up my grimoire, which I had on me already. I'm good. I don't need anything. 
they have all the other stuff. Who are you talking to? Um, oh, um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Ugh. And then I do this. <laughs> Dude, can I communicate with Why you? Why did you show us your book? I know you on that what? book. Um, one of the only things of value that you have. Give me a five die roll to see if you can figure that out. Me? Yeah. <laughs> normally, right. normally, you need to talk out loud and they pick, pick it up. Right, okay. But you're a magician. So I, got, I got two sixes and a five, baby. Okay. So Dang. you, Ooh, you can good with, with the brain powers. Communicate on your own, but you can start the conversation with the cat. Okay. Okay. So look, uh, I have everything I need now that Goldwater called me out. Um, I wasn't going to ask for anything else. How fast do we have to move into this settlement, though? Why can't Why can't we just go get our stuff? Uh, it's better for us to handle the actual moving because we're going to need you all to start acting on this quickly because oh. we just need you in place in case anything goes wrong. So, okay. So I, I'm going to be honest with you, Pickles. I thought for a second that when General Purry came and was said that when there was an offer, I thought we were going to be the community. Like we were going to be the people that they wanted to build society around. That's apparently not true. We're <laughs> only guarding them. But where did you find these people? And like, what if we don't like them? Um, <laughs> uh, how about, uh, I have the general explain the rest. <laughs> I wanna uh, throw in a minor point here that's a callback. <laughs> in your grimoire, there is also the plastic wand, which was the gift from uh, B. Oh, that's right. The, the with the, the little sound effect wand. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. From the I forget the name of the series, but it was the trans trans magician. What was her name? It was Wendy Wendy Wand? I think something like that. Wendy Wand. Yeah, I, I'll look it up. But it okay. was uh, a kid series. Uh, Harry comics. No, it was literally a slam on Harry Potter. It was a very. Um, Kind of the opposite of what it's turned into, but the, one of the gifts from the period where you found these presents of the Christmas episode, right? What, there was a, a plastic toy wand from that series. Okay. So as far as precious items, and I can see you using it as a bookmark. Yeah, it's your, more of like a bookmark. bookmark. At this point. <laughs> All right. Um, so the cat continues. So it sounds like on against the broad broad strokes we. Assuming I can arrange, which I can, to withdraw your um, necessary things to the previous settlement, uh, we can move forward. Um, so I, we have some options, and I would like your insight and possibly some scouting work done uh, about where the settlement would be, because it would certainly not be here. Um, also, if there's anything that any of you feel strongly should be a part of society as it's reestablished, this taxation. would be sorry, taxation, uh, a collection of taxes, and then a disbursement of those taxes to those in the most need and a public works projects. The cat raises the cat eyebrow and says. For a while, we were in talks with various factions of New America, uh, which is a loose confederation of uh, different special interest groups. They sometimes yeah. call themselves the American Dream or sometimes the Dream. Mm. Uh, the committee, considering we were brought to where we are partially because of the failure of the corporate states of America, we have concerns about reinstituting capitalism at this stage. I would hazard to say that this is not capitalism, taxation, and then the redistribution of wealth. Those in need is not inherently capitalist action. Taxes, so, government systems going back as far as the middle, uh, as far as the old empires. So municipal services funded in some other way simply through taxation, but not through capitalism. 
that'd be ideal. Our model, frankly, is democratic socialist. I am very familiar, and this does work 100% with that. We consider things such as the mail mm-hmm. to be absolutely crucial. We need to uh, reinstitute communication. Otherwise, there is no society because everyone is separated. The cat raises its little paws. Lita's just sitting there with her eyes closed, just breathing in very rhythmic patterns, trying to remain calm. <laughs> and yeah, and well, Tor, Tor goes, Tor, Tor, Tor believe Goldwater might cry. This, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> the mail system, a fully funded delivery system of people's property. And messages from, to one another and official government notices. <laughs> what about a firefighting or, or road service? Uh, maybe some sort of layered policing the, the, cat, the appropriate response to the to the problem. The cat does something you've seen Mr. Whiskers do. It, it can actually stand on its back legs. Uh, I forget the anime series, but there's one where the Cats all walk around like this. Ultra cats can do that. And it walks up and gives uh, Goldwater a cat hug. And says mentally, with a a telepathic sound that sounds like a whisper, you've seen my notes. And it pulls back and drops back down to all fours. All this one-on-one cat telepathy. <laughs> Eric is just sitting in the corner with his <laughs> bottle of Jankum, looking at it like, what the fuck is going on? It's, it does. It I does. just wanted a churro. <laughs> yeah. And then and then Torg seeing how emotional uh cold water is, Torg unwraps their their bee rainbow scarf. And and hands it uh, uh, to Goldwater to use to to sop up his his teary face. Well, um, apparently we have strong allies here uh, and are compatible <laughs> in our outlook. So, Colt, let's go ahead and share that map. But also, if you can get it to the the chat, uh, the outward facing chat, if you can so that other folks can look. So this Ooh. is a little hard. And can you feed it to this group's chat? Just dump it in, in the Zoom chat so the players can see it. OK, beautiful. Oh, OK, cool. So this is a revised map of central Texan. Uh, Texan is the corporate state, which is the, uh, the southern Midwest. And uh, this is what it was before the downfall of the corporate states of America. Uh, this is only about a fifth of the total area of the region. The region is actually pretty big. Um, you can see where the Shire is. Um, there are also four uh, circled regions uh, on the map, or should be. Unless I've given you the wrong map, which would be terrible. That's the wrong map, Colt. Hooray. <laughs> oh, all right. So this is okay. So I see the Shire. So okay. So this is a this is an old map. So now we can quickly update this shit. Uh, it should say Texan map S2, sir. So while 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 he's doing that, I, I love this notion that what Eric was saying, like from the outside world, this meeting must have looked like a bunch of crazy people. Like oh yeah. <laughs> People yeah. periodically just like blabbering and then cats looking at them and then talking and then a hug from a cat and some weeping. That was very sweet. <laughs> but yeah. There's a reason the episode is called Cats. Yeah, <laughs> well, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is about to be the uh, bio break anyway. Oh yeah, awesome. Uh, so there'll be a map up shortly and then we're going to gonna talk about what the options are and you are going to go on a study mission to one or more of them. So we're going to stop with a five minute uh, mid-session break. So our question to you is, 
if any of these seem suitable, we can have you go set eyes on them and get a sense of which would make the best choice. Uh, considering you'll have to defend it, we would defer to your judgment. We have, um, for your use in this, and uh, the big guy picks up a little clicker and he clicks it, and you hear outside a truck pull up. You look out the window and it is a Tech Goobers repair truck. Uh, the Tech Goobers was a whole chain that would come in and they'd put your Cat5 cable in or you know, put in a new wireless card. Um, so it's a, uh, the general says, uh, the repair truck's been reinforced. There are gun ports on both sides of the sliders and it's been refitted to run off biofuel. Uh, it doesn't run great because very few things run very well on biofuel, but it's better than trying to run it off gasoline. And unfortunately we couldn't get solar, uh, but this will give you range you didn't have. So how do you feel about the options? I have thoughts. So do I. So, hey, just that, just a heads up. This is Shannon, the actor, uh, commenting. What? Yeah. Well, uh, apparently, when the map was pulled up, uh, the chat didn't get audio. Um, so, so I want to just, I want to just real quick go over the four options. So, uh, why don't you do it as character dialogue and just regurgitate what I just uh, said good. as the dialogue? That sounds so good. about the haunted church. Right, like like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll fix it. Nevada is explaining this to D in language she can understand. <laughs> okay. Personally, just given my own sense of uh, stuff, I like the haunted church because that doesn't scare me at all. Like I've been haunted by dead people and all kinds of whack stuff, and like I will, I'll I'll be fine at a haunted church, but that might not be for everybody. Um, <laughs> I know that the desolation, right? Uh, if we go out to the desolation, uh, that's not great for Goldwater. It'll probably jack up his skin. And he hated when we went there because that's also where your sister died. And it's, True. And it, sorry, not to be callous. Um, just facts, just facts. We'd all probably get real sick if we went down towards Houston, which is where the military bunker is with all of the radiation. Eric would be fine, but everybody else might feel a little sick. <clears throat> so our feeling on that is it's not directly in the front red zone. Okay. But it would be underground. So in the area, you might run into an unusually high number of mutated creatures. Mm. But you, if you take even simple precautions, like covering your skin, things like that, you'll probably be fine. And then, uh, and then there was another, um, there was a, a, a small town uh, that's already been started by a, a pangolin beast man um, whose name I already forgot, but. Uh, Mr. Bruce. Mr. Bruce? Mr. Bruce. Yes. You know me, I'm going to vote for the haunted church, but I don't know if anybody else. <laughs> that. I, I only see one place that has a, a number of advantages relative to the disadvantages and that's the the community that's um, already started Anglin, yes. see i was any... i was thinking that the wasteland had some advantages to it because it's easier to defend and people aren't likely to spend more time there i don't think that's a place to start a society yeah so no agreement not yet okay <laughs> Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. This is how it usually goes for a few days, and then somebody I'm gonna, dies. I'll make my argument for the for the farm and why I I like it. Okay. Uh, the established society has advantages and disadvantages, but I think having people who know each other, having a, a, a small infrastructure, craftsmen, you know, folks that have uh, abilities, maybe even some level of um, Governance is something that we can work with. Uh, also, it's in, as far as nearby danger zones go, the wilds are the 
probably possibly the least dangerous and something that we could tame. Uh, I'm also thinking about long-term agriculture, uh, something that we wouldn't be able to do in an underground base and would be difficult in a church and impossible in the desolation. Um, and it would also keep us close to uh, the only other uh, uh, outpost of humanity that we are friendly with. It's true. So those are that those that's my argument for that. It may be the most boring, but I also think it might be the most practical. As people who are just supposed to guard the civilization and not necessarily integrate or become a part of it, shouldn't we pick something that's relatively unpopulated almost? I feel like that something that's easier. a little bit more easily defensible, perhaps. I feel like that would be easier on us. Plus, um, not to make a make a point for the desolation one, but it puts us a lot closer to the the, um, the church in Dallas that we're trying to thwart. So it might be better to guard less so that we can actually focus our attention on the major task at hand. Plus there's goblins out there and that might be pretty cool for Eric. Just Eric and I didn't have a particularly good time there. Oh, okay. He had a bad time. Torg, Torg, Torg does not want to cause dissent. Uh, <laughs> Torg, Torg will eventually go with what everyone deem deems best, but uh, Torg Torg feel like Torg must at least speak Torg case, and and Torg Torg with Navad Torg Torg think haunted uh, a church great uh, a. No one else will want to go to haunted church, so a we should be able to be relatively safe there, because uh, I I can't think of you know Torg has no other people that that Torg can think of that would want to be at haunted church except for except for Torg fam. Uh, Torg also just think haunted church sound fun, uh, and and also. Torg agree with D that uh, we should pick place that is 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 new for 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 society and not not already established. That way, uh, 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 Torg fan will not be imposing anything on on people who already have something they may not want to have. Goldwater be taxed or have mail we 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 do not know what what existing society uh may resist so it, it Torg just feel it'd be easier to to use place that that can make that society can make its its own and and Torg just think haunted churches sound cool <laughs> What if we did a ranked voting? <laughs> so we don't have to debate that your top vote gets four points, your second vote gets three points, your third vote gets two points, and your uh, last vote gets actually no three, two, one, zero. Lita's looking at Eric and going, "What are you drinking? I don't care." And she's just going to try yeah. to <laughs> take a sip. Uh, of it. Go go easy on that stuff. She's just going to throw it back. So uh, give me a four die roll. Okay. Oh God, this oh could only God. go. Okay, whether or not you die from drinking. <laughs> okay, actually, I had uh, one six and two fives, and then a one. If that makes a difference. Well, let me find the. Uh, you said four, four rolls. Yes, yeah, yeah, a six, two fives, and a one. All right. Oh, here I found it. Yay. She has a fairly high endurance. I don't know if that makes a difference. So Changa, it's probably Changa. Changa, uh, Changa. That yes. Was the a wicked potion prevented from grains and sorghum kicked up with additives like battery acid, embalming fluid. Oh God! <laughs> also toxic, <laughs> serious business. Uh, so you you drink it and the immediately the word why comes into your own head. <laughs> What is this? 
It's just, uh, just oh breathe. My God. Why the would you do you this keep... to yourself? I cannot help but do it to myself. Oh, God. Eric's sad. <laughs> I can taste color. <laughs> that That's is entirely head. the point. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so the general says, I'm hearing haunted church. <laughs> haunted church. Do you, are you concerned that the humans, although we're not limited to humans, the beings that we try to attract to form this experimental society might be put off. You are though a wizard, yes? You, you could perhaps resolve things at this church? I could maybe unhaunt it or talk to the spirits or something. Sure. Or you could double haunt it, which would be even cooler. I don't know what the advantages are of this church. All I know is that it is a haunted church. Hardly something to build a society around. It's just a haunted location. Have you ever read about Christianity, man? It's branding. I think it's just branding. It is really the most us if you decide if you are going to choose a place to be. That might be my favorite breakaway sentence. Have you ever read about Christianity, man? (laughs) <laughs> Torg Tor also quite offended that people just assume that church is haunted by bad ghosts be good not to- all hauntings are bad I don't think hauntings I don't think it's actually haunted so it's just a church so yeah. the, the group has encountered one being that could be considered a haunting the creature known as Corpus Right. Technically, that was a ghost. Okay. So, for anyone listening that doesn't know, when the bombs dropped, the collective death cry of all the people in Corpus Christi created one massive collective scream and became an undead entity that the party encountered. And I think, wasn't uh, Tana along on that one? Yeah, that was Captain Tana. We were getting her boat back. And uh Yeah. So you have some evidence that things like that are possible. Right. Okay, so what I'm hearing right now is at least three of us are saying haunted church. So that's haunted 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 church. If we do a ranked voting, I'm gonna lose. So we're doing the haunted church. What they said, what they said. Lita pushes the drink away and says, sure, why not? (laughs) That actually came out like, sure. Sure, the sure. cat says, uh, can we have the room, please? And indicates that the general would like to speak with Pickles and Lita and uh, Tim Bottom. So the, basically the other PCs leave the room and go out to the main bar. And there are little uh, crunchy snacks and uh, less lethal liquor. Uh, and the general says to those still in the room, um, I, I'm guessing you may have already supposed this, but I'm going to be uh, really frank here. Lita, you didn't directly recommend these people, but it was your mission reports that led us here. Was it exactly about my mission reports? Uh, just out of curiosity. You have a tendency to lean into flowery inflection yeah. and may have overdone it a tad now that I've met these people. I mean, I thought I I thought I was just saying that they're hardy, you know, they don't die very easily. I wasn't really recommending them. So you described Goldwater as have the as old unspoken reserve of a knight of old well when you see him standing on a building from you, high it's you, you know your, sport, your reports are full of turns of phrase just like and, and the cat stands up and is doing that with its paws yeah yeah that's um i always wanted to be an author so i may have taken that into my reports probably should have left some of that description now i was really just trying to get across like they 
were really tough to kill. I wasn't trying, but lots of other people were. I mean, I think I made it clear they had an excessive amount of people. You used people. the word myrmidons. Well. That does sound likely to. It's, I, that's just because I really like vocab words. I just like to, you know, Pickles nope. taught me a lot of languages. I learned I a lot of languages. Thesaurus away. Yeah, I just I I really thought it was clear they have a lot of issues, but they're hardy. They're hard to kill. Was in, kind of in Lita's defense, they are quite hardy. They mm -hmm. you keep coming back to that one word. It's just because it's the only. Your well, mission report clocked in at over five thousand of those words. I and they weren't all just hardy over and over. Again. It was, you know, they- They have they, gumption. They oh. have gumption. That might've also been a word I used. They so just- the, the committee has a new assignment for you. Oh. We yeah. need the two of you to remain here with oh. them and oversee oh. this project. What? Wait, wait. Um, is there any chance you could potentially reconsider? Timpano would be so much better. He's so hardy, the hardiest of the hardy. I really think he'd be a much better fit. We and have... I can carry your case and escort pickles at the same time. I think I'm a quicker shot than Timpano. So there are there are stronger ultra cats that you could potentially send down here for you know monitoring. Or do you wish to me to register? Uh, Dissension to the committee? No, no. Well, not dissent. Not necessarily. No. Um, Moriarty would not be pleased to hear anything but an enthusiastic. Uh, our projects will only succeed. These experiments will only succeed if at least the committee and the committee's agents are of one unified will. Yeah. We're trying to restore society here. Uh, yes. Yes. Can I pull Lita into a one-on-one a, a -on -one real quick? Uh, you, you can, but you're not entirely sure whether uh, the general might be able to overhear it. Because you have like a very limited like talking telepathy. The general seems to be a full-on telepath. Like, oh, no. No. Oh, that the general could pull images like <laughs> the, they just did out of Torg. Apparently the older, more powerful cats get full-on telepathy. Uh, can I risk? I think I'm gonna risk it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Lita, mm -hmm. I think uh, we're out of options. <sighs> just general, just a thought. What if Prof Professor Pickles is just is 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 so in uh, high demand and has so many things. I could I could stay, and Pickles could could do things. Of you are you volunteered? Uh, I'll I'll add to be an aide to an influential Ultra Cat agent. I did. You are not an independent human asset. You are an asset of Professor Pickles. I do, yes, I just I just think pickles has so many things they they could. You're correct. I I advise Lita, and the general stands and tele telepathically yells mm -hmm. that instead of criticizing which paintbrushes you have, you figure out which are the proper ones to use to paint your painting. I I'm not much of an artist, but I understand the metaphor, and would love to be among these hardy folk for however long this requires. General, um, not to uh, ask for too much of a favor, but is there by any chance we could get some additional supplies for this uh, venture? I can get you some plasteel armor. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. We're gonna need that. You're, well, oh no, I didn't mean for you, I meant for the cat. No, that's what I, yes. Uh, you're all close to where the warlord is intruding. You, you are likely to be fired upon. Yes, that is. Uh, Lita, do you wish a proper cat box? We can get you an armored one with a speaker. Uh, 
let's, erring on the side of caution, I think that might be a- That a, would a be better. a very generous gift. I, I recommend that we now come out to this team who is doing a favor for us, just as we're doing favors for them, with maybe a more positive, maybe don't look like I've just assigned you to flipping burgers. It's not flipping burger. Yeah, it, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a it's a death mission. But uh, well, yeah. I'm very excited. Very excited to be uh, here. I will, uh, for the sake of moving forward with my assignment, I will pretend that I believe you. I'm, I couldn't be more heartily serious about my excitement. And she's just going to walk. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm ecstatic to finally see the start of a brand new civilization <laughs> guarded by these incredibly capable adventurers. No matter what happens, last word, and then we need to get them out there to deal with the church. Um, understand that this is your project now, Pickles. Oh. <laughs> so it is you who will be judged for success or failure, not them. They are assets. Fantastic. I love it. Excellent. Und- understand that Moriarty and I are getting older and there may be a place in the concert. Well, that does sound exceptionally lovely. Um, and there are only places for cat do's, not cat don'ts. Yes, of course. Um, then by all means, this will of course be a success. That's what I like to hear. All right. And with that, uh, she says Timpano shoulder and he reaches down an arm and she climbs up on the shoulder and the two humans and the two cats come back into the main so did the rest of you have any conversation while they had their little cat attack? I'm going to do one last push. I'm going to point the map and say, I want you to look at this church. <laughs> and I don't want you to just look at the church. I want you to look at everything around the church. Radiation, <laughs> fire, earthquakes, um, occult symbols, aberrations, fire, uh, and ghouls. It's surrounded by things that can and will kill us. Is this really where you want to go just because it's going to look cool, which is really what I think you guys want? I mean, I think you're right. Yeah. We should have chose the church to start with. (laughs) Right. We're going to the church then. I imagine like Lita and Pickles walk out right as they're saying that. Yep. And there's just, yeah, yep. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Timpano puts his hand on Lita's shoulder, gives you a, a flicker of emotion, and it seems to be sympathetic, and he hands you uh, a pack of gum. What is this? This is some kind of, what is this? Yeah, if you start grinding your teeth, when I get frustrated, I grind my teeth. I find the gum helps. I wanted to be, I wanted to be mad at you, but that's actually pretty thoughtful. He leans in a little bit. Um, Yeah, this, this assignment I have, there's nothing to envy here. I'd rather be in the field. I, tr- I tried. Anyway, she's going to take the gum. <laughs> he picks up uh, the cat and they head over to the truck. The driver is a goblin that comes out and uh, hands the keys over to Timpano. Uh, Timpano asks, who's your driver? Lita's going to look around. Is it me? So I know Shannon can, not Shannon, because <laughs> Shannon's a real person. Yeah, Bod's a character. Uh, in Bod the is actually bizarrely probably the best driver. He's probably because he spent all that time 
sitting yeah, next to Winona while she drove. <laughs> she gave me driving lessons. Yeah, yeah she, gave me, okay. she gave me driving lessons. It was a plot arc <laughs> for a weird reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he has the keys over to the kid. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I'm also completely useless in uh, fights from vehicles. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I'm going to lean out of the window and spell cast. Yeah, it didn't work out great. Uh, He's like, are you old enough? <laughs> what? Who's going to Who's gonna be the authority? Goldwater? I mean, right. yes. he has a badge, so. Yes, and, mm-hmm. and you have passed your driving exam multiple times. He's a fairly issued- good driver. Goldwater, have you issued him a license? Yeah, sure. I'm you sure. <laughs> Right. As soon as as soon as Winona said he can drive, I made him. I made Stay him up. A little, I love it. <laughs> but he only has a temporary because of, you know because it's like a permit because he oh, couldn't yeah. get a picture taken. So it's right, just right, a, right. Yeah. So yeah. it's a constant temporary. So Shannon, the right. visual maps, wrong. the sound kicks out. Is that what's happening? What if we if we show maps, the sound kicks off? Um, I, that's what I heard. I think it's fixed. It's fixed. Oh, okay. It was a so, setting. Uh, Colt, can you give us a little bit of a close up on the church, please? What could go wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> can we see the haunting in the close up? Oh, Will we be Lord. able to view the haunting? <laughs> close up, I, can we get a close up on the ghost? Yeah. Well, you, 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 I'm you curious. Were, you're very optimistic about how much time I had to make maps today. Oh my god. <laughs> um, oh, right. I do. I do. Yet. Just from a from a defense point of view, like. I, I feel like we're well defended here. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't, on a technical level, water. yeah, I guess. I, how are you defended against an earthquake? I'm well defended against natural disasters. I mean, we are right next to hell. So looking at that, there is a, you're not directly in either of the earth burn zones, but they're nearby. An earth burn zone has underground fire. So it actually looks like it's a pre-volcanic like a fire troop. It's like the fire swamp a bit. Yeah. Uh, and you'll have additional building collapse and things like that. There's also a red zone not far from that. <laughs> the quake land is areas that are still plagued by regular earthquakes. There is like a way in if you come at it through hell. Looking at the, looking at the map, uh, there is uh, a small bar called hell. And if you follow that, there's actually a way through all of the zones to go down uh, to Huntsville, Huntsville, the ruins of Huntsville, which is where the church is. So we're going to cut to uh, the van uh, driving in, and uh, you're up there, um, Nevada. Who's got shotgun? Is there a D, right? No? I would assume D would have scrambled up to the shotgun. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, what, what usefulness, kind of wise, usefulness wise, though, I'm better in the back for fighting. For so fighting there's fight. only two, uh, and there's little uh, uh, panels you can pull to shoot out from the okay. sides. There's nothing in back. You have to pop the door. And this one oh. is not built in. There's nothing up top yet. Uh, over time, you can build one in, but there is not one current. Okay, then I would probably uh, call for a seat. Shotgun! <laughs> Uh, so everybody else is in back. Uh, there's easily enough room for everybody. Uh, and we're going to uh, camera in as you're coming into Huntsville. So we'll do like a you nice know, drone shot going over as, as you're going down the shattered road. And up ahead, there is a church on a hill looking all gothic and foreboding and shit. I bet there's ghosts in that church. I sure hope there are. There's little uh, appeal. It has not been damaged by any of the terrible shit in the surrounding region. Much of Huntsville is a complete ruin. This church still has all of the smaller spires are intact. So as far as you can tell, it is completely untouched by the apocalypse. Cursed. Yeah, this is too pretty. Ah. Uh... Uh, Torg, Torg may say, blessed. <laughs> that, that was a sin. That could be it. I, we could only be so lucky. 
Goldwater, didn't you say that churches are tax exempt? Uh, it depends on the what the laws are. Um, as the United States uh, and the corporate entity of the United States fell apart, um, churches were considered businesses, but businesses were no longer taxable either. So, isn't I don't feel like that makes sense. Oh, it didn't. Um, the end of America was a pretty bleak Ugh. place. How close Glad I wasn't there for that. How close do you want to get, Nava? Just a couple hundred yards? Um, yeah, I think I'm kind of slowing to a crawl at this point. So there is a parking lot, and there are still cars there that were abandoned. So it had a big enough parking lot for a reasonably big congregation. So there's still like a dozen cars still in the lot. Also, you can see in a distance out back into the side, it's the kind of church that has its own cemetery. Mm. The cemetery also seems to be unmolested. Navad, do you feel like you're getting any kind of like supernatural readings off this place or anything? Well, let me let me think. Why don't you go ahead and roll four dice, five dice for me? Okay. <clears throat> One, six, and a five. There is powerful magical energy emanating from the church okay. and from the cemetery. Oh, you need to get closer God. to getting kind of actual read, but it is like, just like you can be close to a rad zone and you get like tingly and like get a copper taste, you can feel it in your fingertips. Okay, so... <clears throat> Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> you know how they said this was like a haunted uh, haunted church? Mm -hmm. It's um, it's given off real vibes, like real ones. Like haunted vibes? Mm. What, is, what is vibes? What mean? is a vibe? Yeah. Like <laughs> friendly haunted vibes? Okay. You know how, you know how Pickles, uh, we can hear you? Uh, in our heads, but you're you're not talking, but it sounds like you're talking. Yes. Well, imagine if a place could do that. And oh. I can feel that. They're not Fantastic. saying anything yet, but I can hear it. There's magic um, here. Can you try a little bit harder to decipher if it's any kind of harmful? We'd have to um, get closer, right? Yeah, we probably need to get closer and spend a little bit more time. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Mike, wait, is this like an old church? Like, or is this like a t late 20th century, early 21st century, like mega church? Or what kind of, what's the architecture look like? It is um, 50s, 60s uh, Gothic revival. Ooh. Okay. Uh, and it is undamaged so much that the door is still in place and the glass in the windows does not seem to be broken. Okay. Okay. Cool. This was a great idea. <laughs> Lita seems plagued by thought. Lita, what's going on up there? I'm just I'm just thinking, you know, I'm just wondering, Pickles, if we decide for whatever reason that this isn't the best spot for our new settlement could we just choose another one are we like do we sign we didn't sign a deed to this church you uh, know cold water would know yeah i I'd, I'd have to i'd have to say that because uh our lovely group uh has decided unanimously that mm. the church is the settlement um yeah my superiors are already in the progress to sending everything and everyone to the church here. So let and me quote, if I knew you were involved in this, I apologize. So let me go ahead and have the GM step in here. They did want you to scout. They would not have sent anything until okay. you approved it. So whoever said there's no deed signed is absolutely right. You could literally have this thing be at uh, the, the van <laughs> drives in. And then just pulls out. out. <laughs> like you could absolutely nope this whole fucking thing. Okay. okay. That's what that's what's going through. D she turns okay. to D and she's like, I'm just thinking, what if we just immediately leave? How you, know? if you contact Moriarty or the general, they're not sending anything. They're gonna want confirmation. Okay. Like they said, they do not have boots okay. and drums or any of these. We guys. are the boots. You are the cool. boots. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Then um 
So I don't, I don't know if it was clear to, to us at this point um, that Pickles and Lita are now kind of just staying. Uh, are staying. Did we know this? Uh, I don't think they said anything. Okay, so here's here's yeah, why are you here? Like, as as this conversation is happening, um, Navad is just gonna go. Wait a minute, why are you guys here? Like, do you, are you gonna stick around with us? Um, that is currently our assignment. New uh, friends, new friends, new friends, new friends. I can't believe we drove all this way. And we didn't figure this out. I we I was kind of just avoiding it. If I'm honest, I did, don't think I have. I think I'm still in disbelief, um, if I'm honest. I need to update the family portrait. <laughs> oh, there's a family portrait. Whoa, 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 whoa. There are several. Speaking of family portraits. Oh. oh. Jen here first. Torg wouldn't go anywhere without any at least update on the status of the baby rip situation. That's so. true. <laughs> That would yes. all, that, that and Eric would not go without a churro. So we got some work. To do. <laughs> so that would have been. I'm sorry, because that was implied. I should have made it more explicit. They would be taking care of that while you're doing the first scouting mission, right? And like, then they can. They would have to call a truck or something, and they would be sending that to the shire while you're doing this. Oh, yeah. oh, please! Can our, I, I just want our first four episodes. To be us trying out each place, driving in <laughs> with like the moving van, but going. but in a very Goldilocks kind of way. <laughs> this like, one's just this right. one's too but, hot. But like, but yeah. they, but the word has not gotten out, and the go, in the van, you know. So we move on, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the, he's like a secondary character, like Adventure <laughs> Brothers. Like it's the cats again. We're, we're, we're not even going to Texas this time. <laughs> oh. uh, so are you going to? get closer, park, and investigate the church? Or do you go, looks real scary, nope, and turn around and go home? I'm going to make everybody inspect this place. <laughs> I actually- You're like, you dragged uh, us here. Yeah. I, I, I agree with this entire sentiment, <laughs> but for a completely different purpose. <laughs> I, I want to know what's going on in there. Because uh, if it's actually- of benefit to us in the fact that we're currently in a spot that is surrounded by some of the worst things imaginable. <laughs> yeah. But for some reason, this spot is untouched. We have to find out why. Yeah. I'm putting a whole lot of money on ghosts. Uh, <laughs> so as, as soon as the the truck stops or the van stops i just open the door and immediately get out and start walking towards the church i follow goldie i'm oh. coming too yeah i follow Tor okay. torque starts to walk but torque also looks at navad and says torque okay if navad want to stay because torque understand this may not be most pleasant place for navad Brain wise, Devon, roll, roll five dice for me, Devon. Okay. Oh man. Uh, I got two sixes. As, yeah! you, as you're walking down the road past the parking lot, you see a man, the, a phantom of a man, wearing a aspirational business suit, who is fumbling with his keys while his young wife is holding a baby carrier. Uh, no one else sees that. Hello? They turn and all their skin comes off. <laughs> Roll five dice for me. Oh no. Oh but no. <laughs> uh, I got a five. So you only got a partial? Yep. So I think you. Will, what would be your aud audible exclamation of distress? What would that sound and look like? Oh, oh. And when you react like that, they just vaporize. Oh, okay. <laughs> he hears his subtle but not subtle. <laughs> 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 He looked over the direction of the parking lot, made that noise, and stopped moving. It yeah. was temporary. I look back and I'm like, hey, 
Are you coming? Are you okay? Um, this place might not be great. Yes, think? over my shoulder. <laughs> and I, as I'm walking, I'm like, yeah. And I just keep <laughs> heading. So Eric walks up and slaps him on the shoulder and goes, just light your head on fire, man. I'm sure that'll solve everything. <laughs> so this is only to Navad. So only Shannon hears this. You say this might not be so great. And you hear, oh, that's where you're wrong, brother. It's brunch day. What did you bring? There's um, a guy standing next to you who has come from golfing, and he has like a jello mold. A guy who's come from where? With a jello mold? Golf? Golf? Golfing. Oh, golfing. Hey. I mean, you have to put up with the terrible sermon, but afterwards, we're going to eat, my friend. Are you? Are you here or are you a phantom? And then his skin falls off. Roll five ah. dice. <laughs> uh-huh. Roll five dice. Uh, one success. Okay. So you all hear him kind of say something, and D hears what he said. Mm-hmm. And he reacts like Shannon did. He goes like, ah. So he said... Only D understood the words. He literally said, are you a phantom? He said that out loud. Wait, who said that? Seems freaked out. Navad said that. Navad said, oh, okay. uh, with no, no prompting, are you a phantom? You have also, by the way, right, gotten, right, right, right. You've gotten one third of the way to the church, by the way. <laughs> this so, is going great. <laughs> I run back to Navad because I heard him and I was like, so, so do we stop? I heard Phantom, do we stop? Tor, Tor goes, please say nice Phantom. Please say nice Phantom. Please say nice Phantom. And now you all hear the church bells ring. Church bells are ringing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't do services. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> you object to religious grounds? Yeah. <laughs> it's just not it's just not my thing it, i you know i don't know the songs i have to mouth the words i love to sing but i just have to harmonize with notes it's just a lot for me i really like to participate in community activities and i'm just not part of this community yet i think the test of being part of this community is is not awesome torg what did you see? Torg, when you said, please be nice, Phantom, please be nice, Phantom. They are, but Yay! but then they also, um, then they also, all their skin falls off in front of my eyes and they disappear. The Bob five dice, please. Okay. At this point, Lita has stopped with Professor Pickles and is certainly not getting closer to the, to the church. A success. Torg has idea. Pickles, and then I'm sorry, uh, right back to Torg afterwards. I didn't mean to interrupt all thumbs. No, no, you're fine. Uh, Pickles, because this might be important. You have the position of the committee is there is magic, but it is a new form of alternative physics that the committee does not yet understand but wants to study. Right? So there is context (laughs) for this. Um, So what were you saying, Jen? Torg want, Torg want to point out here. Torg, Torg understand how how melting, burning flesh, uh, in theory, may, may seem like bad, blue, scary. However, Torg, Torg would like to point out that that is how everyone die in fiery blaze. So maybe it is just the unfortunate side effect of the people who who. Who perished. So Shannon, what did you roll? Uh, I rolled a six. So you hear a peculiar whistling sound and you look up and the birds are falling. So you see nuclear falling missiles. missiles with con- contrast. The sky is full of them. I'm going to kind of take a deep breath. 
Count to ten. You hear singing in the church. Okay. Okay. I think this might not be a great place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Goldwater? I say, I, at no point did I stop walking. I was about to say, is Goldwater in the church? I was no, walking Goldwater behind him. I'm. I'm up. I'm. I'm. At the front door, turning and looking back, and everybody clustered around. Okay, so the front door, Goldwater. <laughs> there is uh, a, a deacon standing at the base of the stairs leading up, who has the day's uh, pamphlets. They have a name. I used to go to church. Yeah, missile. No, no, no. Uh, missile, like the days. Oh, the a, missile. Uh, the missile right. So he hands it to you. Are you here? Say goodbye. This is to this was to, to to Goldwater. This is only to Goldwater. So Goldwater sees this. Okay. Yep. Ah. This has a very the shining Mr. Torrance feel. I'm gonna reach out to shake his hand and put my hand on his shoulder. Okay. He smiles with the sadness of someone that knows a loved one is about to die. And I'll say, it's going to be okay. The Lord will lift us all up together. And then his skin falls off. Roll five. Uh, you case roll three dice, please. Okay. Because you're not a wizard or nothing. I ain't not a wizard or nothing. Uh, the, I got a six. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the new dice. <laughs> okay, so you can hold. So, what does your sudden surprise, shock, horror, whatever you care to make it? What does that look and sound like? Uh, I turn back towards the group and I walk very fast. I walk <laughs> everybody and I get back in the van and I say, <laughs> "This was a mistake." <laughs> so you're talking, Andavad, and and Goldo just walks by you, and he kind of vaguely shaking his head. It just is like going right to the van. Yeah, he, he's literally noping out of here. Do you want to shut out the uh, the bombs? Um, because it's about you're in the middle of what amounts to a vision of the bombs dropping. Do you want to use your willpower and try to not see the apocalypse? Yeah, just stick with it. No, I kind of want to see this. Through. Ride it out. It's so much better that way. <laughs> yeah, for real. So. You hear they're singing a hymn in the church about being lifted up. Okay. So they seem to know and have accepted the end is coming and have given themselves over to their Lord and have come together and apparently are going to have like brunch or have had brunch. But around you, you see the bombs drop. D, who I assume is standing closest to Nevada. Navad, mm -hmm. you now have perspective into the apocalypse that you never had before. So he collapses to his knees, weeping, and his eyes are completely unseen for at least a little while. Like he has seen the end of the world. And on purpose, he chose to see the end of the world. Go, go, are you starting the engine? Are you just like, fuck this? You're... I can't drive. <laughs> I, can I can barely drive. Right. Um, so I'm just kind of like. Goldie's waiting by the car looking expectantly. So I drop to my knees in front of Navad and I just grab his face very gently. And I'm like, hey, we we're going to go. It, let's just go. We don't have to stay. And I think, it's gonna I be think Navad would hear D. If nobody else, he would hear D. Yeah. And then I just kiss him on the forehead and, I'm, and I put my forehead on his forehead and I'm like, we're gonna go. Wait. I want to see if I can talk to them. Navad, we have to leave. This is ridiculous. But I saw this place get bombed, but it didn't get bombed. It's still here. So maybe it's a ghost bomb. 
I think these. I think these people are stupid. <laughs> Great. We don't need to cure them of stupidity. We need to leave. I want to try to help them be less stupid. That is, that is a fool's errand, and you will do it alone. We need you to Over drop. Over his shoulder, D, and only D, sees the door to the church open, and a kind of a church lady dressed woman comes out and starts walking towards the lodge. So I, I, I do something very out of character for myself, but in character for different versions of me. I get into battle stance and I, <laughs> I slam Navad backwards and drag him by the collar and like yeet to the car. So your, your <laughs> tiny, deadly sort of girlfriend is bodily pulling you into a van. Yeah. How hard do you resist that? I'm going to resist this. Can I, I go want... ahead and roll for, uh, for my aggressive stance? <laughs> if it comes down to martial arts and you choose to effectively physically master him, he does mm -hmm. not have the training to stop you, but you will have crossed the line. Because it will take not just pulling and pushing, it'll take, I have you in a hold and I have taken your choices away. So okay. you're aware that you'd have to cross that line. So before I cross the line, as we edge the line, <laughs> right I, at the end, <laughs> raising, <laughs> edging, uh, edging. I do, uh, I do the slightly sexy, uh, slightly intense thing where like I'm dragging him right, and he's like resisting. So I just pin him to the ground, and I get really close to him, eye to eye, so he can't see anything else. And I'm like, you need to pick what you care about, us or this fucking church. This is stupid. I want to know what happened here. Fine. And then I just get up and then I walk over to Goldwater and I start crying. Oh, man. I awkwardly give a hug. <laughs> I do my best. Navad, if you want to find out what this place is about, we could come back here. You and me. But we're not staying here. It's just spooky. It's Nobody's getting hurt. Not is this what Torque has been saying? Navad, there's a lady coming after you right now! But she's not going to do anything. She, you haven't seen her. She stopped politely, like, at the edge of the parking lot. is kind of waiting. I turn to this lady. What? What do you want? <laughs> what? Your, your friend seems concerned. Yeah, what's going on here? What are you doing? We've called upon the Lord to protect us from the end. Well, Your what Lord happened? has forsaken you and everything around here. Just FYI. He has not. The bombs have fallen, and yet we survive. How? I have returned to this service so many times, and the church is untouched. The Lord has answered, D. I'm sorry. You know my name? The Lord Who are you? Eleanor? Do I know you, Eleanor? No, but I'd be happy to get to know you. Oh, I, I have enough friends. I made two new ones today. We have hours before the bombs fall again. But how many there's, times? There's brunch. It's delicious. How often do the bombs fall? I'm not sure that my sense of time will match yours. It's all kind of dreamlike and blissful. You're welcome to join the congregation. <laughs> no. At this point, Torg, Torg feels like D may be provoking a spirit that was perfectly fine. And so... Oh, Tor okay. just slides up to D and goes, Hey, D. Torque say, if D not want to go, D can stay in van and we can chat with friendly ghost lady and D can protect van. That sounds great. Is anyone not gone back to the van? Navad has not gone back to the van? 
<laughs> and Eric has not come back to the van. Puzzles and I have not. Yeah, and where Jordan are we has not come back to the van. I'm, 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 listen, Pickles is interested in this because this is exactly <laughs> what, you know, the the collective, you know, minds of the cats is just like, okay, new stuff. We want to know how this works. So this is like, Pickles kind of wants to go in the church and figure out what's going on. <laughs> And if so, Pickles is going in the church, Lita's going in the church. So exempted from the desire to go into the haunted church would be Goldwater, Torg, and Dee. Mm. We're protecting the van at this point? Yeah. Wait, no. Torg's going to the church. Okay, so Torque just Goldwater and Dee. I, Goldie, are you staying outside? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. He's, the look on his face is fuck this. Yeah, he's okay, in cool. the car, yeah. in the vehicle. It is pretty unambiguous. I'm having Goldie explain the difference between church and state to me. <laughs> Lita's giving Dia a look like, please take me with you, but no, she can't. Yeah, your calling is very specific here, sadly. Okay. All right, so the rest of you approach the church. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull Karen and rack her just because. Okay. You now hear the sounds of uh, animated uh, friendly talking like fellowship coming from the basement of the church. No no one in the, the main body of the church. Uh, you head up and the door is closed but not locked. Okay. And you all see an altar boy. He's cleaning up. Oh, hello. Uh, you're late for the service, but they've begun the fellowship downstairs. And then his skin falls off. Okay. Uh, everyone us. who's not the VOD, roll three dice. The VOD oh, roll five. Oh, God. Wait, roll what? Three die? Three dice, and you're looking for sixes. I got two fives. I got okay, a five. Partial is enough to stay put, but I, three I so, got two fours and a two. Uh -oh. I got a six. I got a six and a four. She didn't want to be there. <laughs> so Lita, yep. what, is, what is your physical, <laughs> what sounds like you lose your shit. You have not made your roll. You, the, like literally there's this adorable, like 11 year old, you know, toe headed kid in the, the white acolytes rubs. And then his skin does Raiders of the Lost Ark. It just, it slops off. She's going to retch and just go, oh my God. <laughs> And turn to the side. <laughs> so pickles, you've never seen her like that. Uh, Lita. Mm -hmm. And by the way, <laughs> once the horror thing happens, the phantom generally is gone. So it it does the face thing and vaporizes. Lita, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm fine. I'm for fine. your own benefit. Mm. And for the sheer numbers of things, mm -hmm. just in case things go wrong, please stay by the car. I can't, I can't leave you in here alone with the skin things. <laughs> I can't, I'm I, sorry. I can handle, I'm, I'm mentally strong enough to be able to handle whatever this actually is. But what if it like actually, like physically attacks? I don't, I know you can handle the skin thing, I mean, uh, I know you can handle that, but um, our new friends, um, uh, Torg Strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've got and, a gun. And so Lita? Pickles, you're persuading. Uh, so give me five dice. Let's see uh, if you can talk. We'll go ahead and use a game mechanic here because you have legitimate authority over Lita. Yeah. Uh, three sixes. Wow. <laughs> She's I'm just going to start retching again and go, you know what? You're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm overusing the term unambiguous, but three sixes for God's sake. Yeah. She's <laughs> like, okay, but uh, you have the, you know how to call me if you, um, if you need me. <laughs> right. So comes stumbling out of the church, retching and D has a sympathetic gag reflex. So <laughs> Starts retching. Oh, I'm sorry. The whole moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was horrible. Ugh. No, you're fine. Did you see the skin thing? Too? Yeah, it fell right off. It's it so was... bad. 
bad. A child. It was a child and the no. skin. <laughs> <laughs> She's like fanning herself. I need five dice from the vodka. <sighs> Uh, I got a six. This does not appear to be an illusion over a ruined church full of dead people. You're not sure how. These people are pretty clearly phantoms. They're clearly dead. But the building is not destroyed, and the bombs did fall, and they have not gone on to wherever people go. Something else is very powerfully magical as it work here. So I'd imagine, considering what you've seen, you were kind of half expecting to walk into the church and see the dead bodies in the pews. We don't see that. I thought. So, do I do I get a sense of like where that is? There any directional to it? So at this point, I think you get more information. You've got your reading ability. You could try to read the magic. Mm -hmm. You want to cast a spell? Yeah, what can I uh, what can I cast in this situation? Uh, don't worry about it right now. I'll just have yeah, you. Yeah. I I, I kind of want to just see like okay, I'm getting these vibes or whatever. You know, I want to f- see if I can pinpoint it more accurately because I am beginning to suspect some other thing is animating their so present. Roll, roll four dice for me. This okay. could get interesting fast. I got. Two fives. There is a light. When you use the ability, a light springs into being up near the altar, like at the front of the of, of the main church. Okay, like a light. I, I sense a, a source of light. You, you see it. Like to your eye, when you cast a spell, it comes, you make it come into being. I'm going to start walking up there. Guys, I, I think there's, I need to check out something up by the altar. All right. I, I cover him. I'm coming Listen, with you. You. I, I love, hold on. I love literally that it is a, a wizard and a cat <laughs> in a desecrated church <laughs> walking up to deal with. Some, okay. Anyway, this is goth as hell. Anyway. <laughs> so as you approach the light, you and Pickles, but not Eric, who's farther back. You and Pickles will see. There is a young man in his late 20s, early 30s, um, slender but fit, um, darker skin like Mediterranean, um, beard, long hair white undyed robes. Am I who you're looking for, Navon? Oh, man. Um, Maybe? Well, you found Get out of here. Wait. That's so hard to believe. Look. I said this earlier. I said, have you ever read about Christianity? And he holds I was making a hand. joke that it's like... He holds up his hand and there is a wound in his palm. <laughs> what? Okay. Jumping, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you are a mage, right? Yeah. My son, you're yeah. expecting my son, right? Uh, no, I no, I'm a mage. I didn't. I wasn't expecting you to call me my son. All right, I'll I'll dispense with that then. Um, all these people wanted something very intensely during a supreme moment. During a moment that would have very strong magical energy. Oh. You can't believe that the thing they wanted came to pass. Wait a minute. They willed you into existence. They willed you into being. This is kind of a metaphor. Smiles at you. Uh, Think kindly of them. They were just afraid. Okay. I was able to protect the church. 
they've protected themselves and they persist. And they do this every day? It's what they are now. And what they are is worship and fellowship and celebration. It's not, it's no kind of doom to God. No, I, I understand. I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad or afraid, but I have a question. Would we violate what they're up to if other people were here? Yes, it might disrupt it. Okay. Well, I, I think collectively we've already come to the decision that this isn't the greatest place to be anyway. You encountered several members of the congregation and by doing so, you made them re-experience their own deaths. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not great. They didn't pass because they're protected by me, by themselves, by their faith. But it's something they shouldn't have to feel again. Okay. I can respect that. I do respect that. And also, I got to say, some of the people that I came here with, they already can't deal with it. I can't imagine trying to make more people deal with this. Uh, it's quite a leap that you've made and some psyches I don't think could make the jump. I'm afraid to eat chocolate, so I get it. <laughs> Can I do you a small favor? Sure. He performs a miracle and fixes that. I can, I can tell right away. Yeah, he lays hands on me. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he he laughs. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a very friendly, he's like the kind of guy that you would love to have as a wingman at a bar. He's like a very, he's like a, a Bruce. He's he's like the he's like the laughing. He's like, he's like your is. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you can have buddy, right? like, buddy Christ! Buddy Christ! Buddy Christ! Buddy Christ! So I would think it might be best if you let the legends of this place remain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no way we would send anyone here besides us. We'll, we'll let the legends stay. Hey, do you know a guy named Mr. Bruce? I do not. Is okay. he a tailor? He sounds like a tailor. No, he's a pangolin man. What's a pangolin man? A uh, spiny ant eater. Hey, well, I, I really, I only really know the world that came up to the end. I know nothing of the world outside the church now. There are pangolin men, and that's not a sexual thing. No, it's apparently I've never met one. I know some badger guys and rabbit people. And... I've known badger guys. There were a lot in Rome. <laughs> All right, Jesus. Um... Uh... <laughs> I, I think we're gonna go. Hey, pickles, did you get any of this? Uh, and fortunately, <laughs> I did. Um, Hold on. <laughs> did you think that at any point in this game you would <laughs> would say, "All right, Jesus"? <laughs> can, no. Can <laughs> I? I, I <laughs> what a great episode for <laughs> Kate and I to join. <laughs> I, ha I have right, to Jesus. not waste this opportunity. Um, can Pickles ask Jesus a question? <laughs> yeah. Go right yeah. ahead. And what would the ultimately evolve uh, the, the final evolution of the entire species of cat, what would the cat have to say to Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get these people to give such undying faith that this would protect them? It is, to my awareness, combination of fear and fellowship 
connection to the other people in the congregation. So united by fear in this way, it was stronger than any of them could be individually. Uh, hmm. Fair enough, Jesus. Community is very important, but I suspect you know them. Uh, that and by is... the way, the general's first name is in fact Katie. So um, you were clearly <laughs> you were clearly curious. So Eric has racked Karen back into the thing. <laughs> yep. And uh, is crying and and walks up to Jesus and very quietly under his breath says, can you make it stop? Oh! He looks into your eyes and says, it's not your fault. Oh! And um, Eric breaks down crying for real and uh, falls to his knees and says, thank you. He turns to Navad. The cycle is coming around. The bombs will fall soon. It's not in a regular pattern to this timeline. I would get your friends out of there. You gotta can, go. can, can Tork say something to Jesus before? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 given that sentence being so great, absolutely. I like the idea that they're all inside talking to Jesus and in the car, Goldwater, D, and Lita are just like, so. Well, and to you, it's like <laughs> Arkham Horror, as yeah. far as you know. Right. I'm like, how long have you been dating Navad? You know, just trying to make small talk. <laughs> I want the answer to that question before I go back to Troy. <laughs> We didn't have an official, like, you know, ask out day. It just sort of happened. So I think kind of like a couple, a few months. It's going well. It's going well. I don't have a lot of competition, though. So. All right. Meanwhile, inside, Torg. <laughs> so Torg seeing all this, of course, uh, and seeing everyone's either pain be relieved or you know answers to burning questions you certainly having an impact on your friends so clearly clearly torg has one thing on their mind and so torg just goes straight up to jesus and says torg torg just want to know if baby rip okay that's all torg want to know can jesus tell torg if baby rip okay I can't reach beyond the church and know nothing of the world outside, but I do know that you've been more a mom than Rip's mother could have possibly been. And I've given tremendous love to a creature that otherwise would have been alone. So Rip is and will be okay. Torque thank Jesus. <laughs> Jesus loves her. And now you should really get out because steam is going to start falling and bombs and it's going to get really terrible in here. Yeah, we got to go. You, we need to leave now. Let's go. <laughs> Immediately. I mean, your other choice is to join the congregation. No, 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 no. We're fine. Good on congregation. We're, we're good. We're going to go that somewhere so else. Uh, thank is, you. <laughs> that was about 20 minutes. So the other members of the team, it's about 20 minutes. And then they all come half running out of the church, but they all look affected, like something significant has definitely happened. Tor Torg, Torg is smiling profusely and just immediately <laughs> like, Torg was right, Torg was right, Torg was right, Torg was right. We were, we Torg were, Torg was right. <laughs> We were also kind of wrong, though. This is a terrible place to create a settlement. <laughs> yes, but, but Torg, Torg very much had a feeling that it, it didn't have to be a negative presence. Oh, it wasn't. Yeah. But and that's but, what... It felt pretty is. negative to me, for what it's worth. <laughs> that's fair. But trust me when I say that 
what happened in the church? It was nice. Uh, we have to get out of here, though. I think the, okay. the most immediate, <laughs> obvious change would be Eric. Because when you're on somebody that has that much tension and they're carrying that much weight, they suck the oxygen out of the room and that's gone. So like when Eric gets in the van, it's not like, there's always that sense, it's, it's not the same, but it's similar to being around the abuser where you're always like, like this and there isn't that feeling at all. So Eric kind of leans up and kind of like does this over your shoulder and goes, you miss Jesus. <laughs> And that's the but that is the fucking button. So I'm gonna call that the end of the episode. The camera pull back as the van pulls away. Uh, we will have learned that the new settlement sponsored by the Ultra Cats will not be based in the haunted church that was uh, that has an incarnation of the Christ resident in it. Uh, all right, um, that was our first session of season two. Uh, we have an arc. The uh, the arc is you probably already figured out. It's thematic. Uh, it's called Remove Curse. Uh, make of that what you will, because I will. Um, we will be back next week, and we'll. Uh, and you're gonna do closing, um, Shannon. Yeah, I got it. I'll take it. Um, so and I do want to say thank you to everybody, and and welcome uh, to Hannah and Katie. Yeah. Glad to have you on. What board. a welcome. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, hey, uh, so is it me? Am I up? I don't even know what's happening. You're up. Oh, okay, cool. Um, hey, everybody, thank you all uh, so much for uh, joining us for season two. Um, as usual, we want to thank our moderators, uh, Qui-Gon Bowers and uh, Tiger Stripe Moon were in the chat. Um, Andreas Fabis for our audio opening and our chronicler, uh, Brett, <clears throat> who uh, kept us filled in on uh, some of the backstory uh, in the in the chat and um, is always watching so that uh, we know what to refer to in future episodes. Um, join us next week. We have our new schedule. We're on Tuesdays uh, at 7 p.m. the first three Tuesdays of the month. So we'll we'll do these three Tuesdays and then we're going to take one off. Then we'll be back the first three Tuesdays in June. Our guest for the next two episodes is uh, Rooster Teeth animation writer uh, Eddie Rivas is going to be joining us. Um, so we're really excited to host him. Uh, so come check us out and uh, maybe we'll figure out where this next settlement is going to be. Uh, until next time, we will see you in the wasteland. <laughs>